This is Truth in the News, bringing you the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I'm your host, Max Freeman. And I'm your co-host, Jane Smith. Our top story tonight will shock you. Our legal system is a fraud. And it has been for many decades since 1938. Can you explain more about this? Everything in the court is done in commerce. That means that the courts only have jurisdiction over corporations because they use the Uniform Commercial Code, known as the UCC. Flesh and blood human beings are not corporations so the court has no jurisdiction over us. Then why are so many people in jail or have to pay fines? The best way to explain this is by example. If you are stopped by a police officer for driving without a license, having no motor vehicle registration and having no insurance, then he will give you a ticket or citation which is a contract that you must sign as a promise that you will appear in court. Okay, go on. When you go into the courthouse, the man behind the bench in most cases is not a judge. He is a magistrate. Magistrate is simply another name for administrator. What? Do you mean that it is not really a judge passing judgment? How can they do this? This is part of the deception. The first thing they do is to ask you if you are John Doe. They are trying to establish a connection between you and the person on the traffic ticket. In actuality, the person on the document is your strawman. What is a strawman? A strawman is a legal fiction or a corporation that looks like your name, but it is all capital letters. It is not you. You are a flesh and blood human being with the name John of the family Doe. Not John Doe, spelled with all capital letters. A person in legal terms is a corporation not a flesh and blood human being. You thought you were a person but you are not. You are a flesh and blood human being. Your strawman is the person. I didn't know about this. Does everyone have a strawman? If you were born since the early 1960s then you have a strawman because you have a birth certificate because your parents applied for it when you were born. If you were born before the early 1960s you should have a long foreign birth record. However, if you made the mistake of applying for a birth certificate later instead of a copy of your long foreign birth record, then you also have a strawman. It was done without your knowledge and without your consent, so in actuality, it was done unlawfully. Wow. That makes me angry. I didn't know that I have been tricked into having a strawman. We all should be angry because it is how our own government enslaved us. We were born into slavery and didn't even know it. We are all debt slaves, but that is a topic for another discussion about the money system. Tell me more about the strawman. If you look at your social security card or birth certificate, it has your name in all capital letters. This is true of your driver's license, your checkbook, your credit and debit cards, and every official document you have. I never noticed that before. So you are saying that all these documents are showing my strawman and not me? Correct. I can't believe it. It has been under my nose my entire life and I never saw it. That's the way they meant it to happen, right under our noses. Speaking of your driver's license. You were tricked into giving up your constitutional right to free travel when you sign the driver's license because the driver's license is a contract that you are coerced into entering into with the state so that the state can tax you and to subject you to its laws. Title 18 of the U.S. Code, which is the higher federal law, defines a motor vehicle as a vehicle that is used for commerce. Lawfully, under the U.S. Code you do not have to have a driver's license registration or insurance for your car since you are not conducting business on the highways. Under the Constitution and federal law, known as the U.S. C. or U.S. Code, you have every lawful right to travel, however, under state laws, also called statutes, it is illegal to drive without a driver's license, registration and insurance. You keep using the words legal and lawful. Is there a difference between what is legal or illegal and lawful and unlawful? Yes, there is a difference. Something that is illegal by state statutory laws may still be lawful because common law permits it. The state tricks you into giving up your lawful common law, 
inalienable rights by getting you to sign a contract to abide by their statutory laws. That contract is the driver's license. This is why the state wants you to get a driver's license when you move to their state, so that they can subject you to their laws and tax you. But if I don't have a driver's license, I am charged with a crime. How can I get away with driving without a license? When you sign your name on the license or anything else, you should write without prejudice UCC 1-308 above your name. If you are getting a ticket from a police officer, also write, under duress, because there is a man with a gun threatening to kidnap you and take you away if you do not comply. Any contract that is entered into under duress or without all the facts being made known is not valid and not enforceable. What is UCC 1-308? The UCC is the Uniform Commercial Code. It is the law that the courts follow. It is under maritime jurisdiction, not common law jurisdiction. The courts do not use common law anymore. Actually common law has not been used in the courts of this country since 1938. The common law is in line with the Constitution, however the UCC is not. However section 1-308 of the UCC is the section containing the reservation of rights. If you invoke section 1-308 then you are reserving your constitutional rights even if you are signing a document that takes them away. If you do not assert your rights then you automatically lose them. So, what is the real purpose behind us having a strawman and having a driver's license? Or should I say, are strawman having a driver's license? Since the courts do not have jurisdiction over you as a flesh and blood human being, they have to do business through your strawman because business can only be done through corporations. You were deceived into thinking that you must be responsible for your strawman and deceived into thinking that you have to obey their rules so that the courts can have jurisdiction over you. So if I go to traffic court, how do they get jurisdiction over me if they don't already have it? They first get you to identify yourself as the strawman, but this is just a formality since they already assume that you are responsible for the strawman. Secondly, the judge or magistrate asks, do you understand the charges against you? The word understand in legalese means to stand under or agree to. In other words, by saying yes to that question means that you enter into a contract with the court to allow them to prosecute you, hence you give them jurisdiction over you. So are you saying that if I say no when asked if I understand, then they can't prosecute me? Yes. That is correct. Tell them that you do not wish contract with them and that they have no jurisdiction over you unless you consent, which you do not. At this point the judge will try to get you to enter a plea of innocent, guilty or no contest. You must refuse to enter a plea. If the judge tries to enter a plea in your behalf, even if that is a not guilty plea, you must object and tell the magistrate or judge that they are not allowed to practice law from the bench and that they do not have subject matter jurisdiction over you and that you do not permit them to enter a plea for you. Only you can enter a plea or your attorney can enter a plea on your behalf. What is subject matter jurisdiction? Subject matter jurisdiction is the authority of the court to hear and make a determination in a court action. If they prosecute you, then you can appeal to a higher court and argue that they did not have subject matter jurisdiction. According to the late Chief Justice William H. Rehnquist, 100% of the people that are in federal or state penitentiaries are there voluntarily. What? Why would anyone go to jail voluntarily? Most everyone who is in jail is there voluntarily because they did not assert their rights and did not challenge the court for lack of subject matter jurisdiction. Also, in order for the courts to prosecute you they must also have documents from the prosecutor that state in detail what the charges are. These documents are called formal information or formal charges. Traffic court tries to use the citation that the police officer gave you as the charges but it is only a statement from the witness. The ticket or citation that you signed is just a contract that you signed to promise to appear in court. The police officer is not a prosecutor. If there are no formal charges on file with the court clerk then they cannot prosecute you unless you consent to it by saying that you understand or enter a plea. So what happens then? Do I win my case? 
if you didn't harm anyone and there is no corpus delicti or victim then they won't pursue it and will dismiss the case. Remember that the cop is not a victim, he is a witness. Wow. I wish I knew about this when I got a speeding ticket last year. Lawyers and judges will never admit to any of this because they signed an agreement to not do anything to hurt their profession. Never get a lawyer to defend you against laws where there is no victim because the lawyer's first obligation is to the court and not to his client. Remember that the courts are offices of a corporation and corporations exist to make money.